Now that you trained your neural network to perform the orientation discrimination task, let's look at the activations of units in the neural network and compare it with the brain neurons activations. In this slide, you can see the activations of uh, neurons in brain region V1 and uh, activations of units in model pooling layer and activations of units in model fully connected layer. As you see, uh, brain neurons in region V1 show selectivity to some specific orientation. For example, this orange uh, neuron is highly selective to this specific orientation. Um, model units in pooling layer also show kind of similar property. For example, this green uh, unit is selective to some specific orientations, but not others. Um, more interestingly, uh, units in model fully connected layer show a categorical selectivity. For example, the blue and green units are highly selective to positive orientations, but um, not negative orientations. And on the other hand, the orange unit is highly selective to negative orientations compared to positive ones. Uh, the question is how we can quantitatively measure this similarity between brain um, neurons and model neurons. One approach is to use representational similarity analysis. And the idea here is that for any pair of a stimuli in the similar set, um, you extract the neural activity pattern and then compute a dissimilarity measure between them, which could be different distance measures. Um, here we are going to use one minus correlation coefficient, and then we construct a matrix which each row and column of this matrix um, is indexed by one of the stimulus in the stimulus set. Um, and you would assign the dissimilarity measure between each pair of stimuli to an element which is indexed with their corresponding stimuli. This matrix is called representational dissimilarity matrix. With representational similarity analysis, you would first extract activation patterns from like each layer of the network, then compute their um, the similarities and uh, create an RDM. So you can create an RDM for each layer of the model. In a similar way, you would um, extract the uh, neural activity patterns from brain region V1 and then compute their pairwise dissimilarities and create an RDM from V1. Then, now that the, um, mod, uh, the data is mapped to a common space of RDM, it's easy to compare them by just simply co computing their correlation of these RDMs. Um, here you can see the correlation efficient for uh, comparing uh, model pooling layer RDM with V1 uh, brain RDM and uh, model fully connected layer RDM with brain V1 RDM. As you would expect, the correlation is higher for pooling layer compared to fully uh, connected layer. Representational similarity analysis is a powerful method because it maps the data from different modalities to the common space where they can be directly compared and you can uh, find their similarities. Uh, for example, you can compute RDM from brain data, from neural network activity patterns, from image pixels themselves, or even from the behavioral data. For example, in the orientation discrimination task, you can um, create an RDM by comparing reaction times to each stimuli and then compare it with brain data or by um, neural network um, data. What you learned today um, is how to use deep learning to build a normative encoding model of the visual system and how to use RSA framework to evaluate how the model's representations uh, match to those in the brain.